Liberals in the ACT are also doing some soul-searching today with the former Wallabies captain and independent uh, candidate, David Pocock, set to unseat the Liberal Senator Zed Sezelja. Uh, David Pocock joins me here in the studio. David, thanks so much for your time. Thanks Congratulations, you. first of all, on a successful campaign, basically from uh, from the ground up. You yeah, put it all together. Uh, I, I really enjoy this. Obviously, still a fair bit of counting to go, but really proud of the campaign we ran. Uh, we set out to make politics about people, spent a lot of time having conversations in the community and built our policy platform based on those conversations. And I think that resonated. And in the end, we had just over 2,200 volunteers across the ACT. So come pre-poll and polling day, you know, had people in Team Pocock T-shirts everywhere having those last minute conversations that we know are so important. 2,200. That's that's a big a yeah. Big it's army a lot of, of uh, it's a volunteers. amazing logistical exercise. So why which, did it resonate? Do you think with with Canberrans? I think there's a real frustration in Canberra that we are taken for granted. It's been a safe safe seats for so long, and this is this was our best chance to actually make it marginal, and in doing so, actually have an independent voice in there who will stand up for the ACT on issues that are important to us. That's certainly what I want to do, and we'll we'll wait and see what the what the rest of the, the count says. Well, yeah, as I say, I mean, you've got a, a, quite a big margin. What, what's a, Do you see yourself as part of the Teal tidal wave? I mean, it really was a tidal wave when you look at Federation seats for the Liberal Party wiped out mm -hmm. by the Teal independence. Mm -hmm. Do you see yourself as part of that? sort of mix? I mean, my campaign colours are like a navy blue <laughs> and obviously running in the Senate, so it is, it is different. Uh, but I think the results from the weekend show that there are a lot of Australians out there who are frustrated with politics. The way that the big issues that we all know we have to get on and deal with have been politicised by the major parties. And I think it's, a, you know, it's hopefully a great reminder to the major parties to reconnect with the people that they're actually there to serve. So did, uh, do you have any specific thing or issue policy that you would do differently, say, to Katie Gallagher, who is the, the Labor senator? Mm -hmm. Is there, you, you want to have an independent voice, that's your argument, but what specifically, is there something that you can point to and say, well, I wouldn't cop that as part of a party, mm -hmm. so that's why I want to be independent? I mean, I've been frustrated with, with politics and when I was asked to run as independent, that was a big part of the reason why I put my hand up. I've got no interest in having to tow a party line that doesn't align with what people in Canberra are telling me that they want from their elect elected representative. You know, during the campaign, territory rights was, was an issue. It makes no sense at all that as a territory we cannot we don't have the same right as the states to debate and legislate on issues like voluntary assisted dying, which the vast majority of Canberrans and Australians support. So, you know, I think there's, there's issues like that where you can actually stand up to the major parties and, and, you know, hopefully make them a priority. Anthony Albanese says he wants to bring an end to the, the climate wars. Do you see your role as trying to, to nudge more ambition mm -hmm. into this government, which is obviously a bit of a shift from the previous government anyway, but do you see your role now as part of that group in the Senate mm -hmm. to, to drive mm -hmm. greater ambition? And what sort of number would you be hoping to get to midterm, say, 2030? I think climate's the perfect example of an issue that has been politicised. We've ended up wasting a decade. We're, we're being singled out around the world as laggards. We can turn that around really quickly. Economics have shifted so much. And I think the best example of that is, is going into this election. Neither of the major parties had an emissions target for 2030 as ambitious as the Business Council Australia, which says a lot about the economic opportunity that this is if we have the right policy in place. I'm determined, if, should I be in there, to ensure that the way that policy is set benefits everyday Australians, that nobody's left behind, and that any savings that there are from electrification, which on average, it should be about $5,000 per household per year, go to households. We, we've got a housing affordability and cost of living crisis across the country. And I think this is one way where we can tackle both 
climate playing our part, but also saving people money. So you, you believe that the economics, because it's often spoken about in terms of the, the, the cost of change and the cost mm -hmm. of coal jobs and traditional sectors, mm -hmm. do you, but you believe that more jobs can be created in those regions mm -hmm. affected by any closures of traditional fossil mm -hmm. fuels? You know, I see the role of leaders is, is looking ahead and dealing with the big challenges we face in a way that actually turns them in to opportunities. Clearly, there has to be a focus on the regions. We need to be investing in them, uh, ensuring that renewable projects go there, and then looking ahead to, to industries of the future, whether that's green steel or green hydrogen. Uh, I think that there are huge opportunities in that area. And, and here in Australia, we are, we are blessed with when it comes to renewables. We should be capitalising on that. And as, as a, a senator for the ACT, if, if you do get there, as we think, you know, the trajectory looks very promising for you right now, what are the other issues that you want to bring to this parliament on behalf of Canberrans? You've spoken about uh, the issue of uh, voluntary assisted dying, about climate change. What are the other key matters that were raised with you on the polling booths around this territory? I mean, territory rights to me is, is should be an easy fix, it's not going to cost the government any money. Uh, the, the big one is housing affordability. We, we're in a crisis here in Canberra. We're the most expensive city to rent, the second most expensive to buy. We've got 38,000 people living in poverty, really stretched. And so the next government has to tackle this, this problem. There's, there's, a, there's a lot to do. It's going to take some, some big picture thinking and, and some, some bold moves from the government. The ACT, for example, the ACT has, a, has a, you know, a social housing debt that other states have had wiped, which is limiting our ability to actually invest in social housing. I think that's potentially something that we could look, on, look at. Now, well, we're just seeing this breaking news. Josh Frydenberg formally has conceded the seat of Kuyong, one of those very seats that I pointed to before, David Pocock. Extraordinary uh, result, this uh, Teal wave, and Josh Frydenberg, the most high-profile victim of that. Do you, just finally to you, do you see the fact that you've, your profile as a, uh, you know, rugby player, as a wallaby, and mm -hmm. your, your fan base in the ACT as a former... Brumby, that would have helped mm. given your your profile because one of the, the hardest things is running as an independent, well, the two things are resources mm -hmm. and profile. Yeah. You don't have to worry about the profile bit. Yeah. Yeah, I think both things are important. Na name recognition, having that existing profile definitely helped. Money is also a factor, but if you look at Clive Palmer, it doesn't solve all your problems. And so... I think it was the combination of, of having some sort of existing profile, but then having a policy platform that actually reflected what Canberrans want and keeping it positive and trying not to get drawn into uh, a lot of the, the lies and, and rubbish that we saw during the election campaign, which I think is exactly what people are so sick of come elections. It should be about ideas. It should be, if you're an incumbent, it should be about your track record, what you've actually delivered for, for the people that you're wanting to vote for you again. Well, we will speak to you, uh, no doubt, if, if you are successful and uh, secure that Senate spot many times over the next six years. So, David Pocock, appreciate your time. And, and at the very least, congrats on a successful campaign. Thanks a lot, Kieran. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. Now, uh, I believe that Josh Frydenberg has formally conceded that seat of Kuyong, as I mentioned there with David Pocock.